This video was brought to you by Wondrium. Hello friends, my name is JJ. So one of the gimmicks we do on this channel every so often is solve flag mysteries. Because I like to think of myself as a bit of a flag spurt, my viewers like to send me photos of mysterious flags they encounter on their adventures and ask me if I can figure out what they are. So let's dive right in. So the first one comes from my friend Sugar Mist, who says, I came across this photo in a random collection of photos sourced from random articles. There was no context or explanation for what it is. I did, however, notice the flag held by the two men on the left. I did not know what it was and hope that maybe you might be interested in solving it. It looks like they live somewhere with mild slash cold weather, given the fact that they are wearing jackets. They do indeed look cold and perhaps at some sort of protest given their signs, but there were a few other clues as well. This building in the background here seems to be flying a flag of its own and based on what appears to be a Union Jack and a dark blob in the bottom corner, I think this is the flag of the Canadian province of Manitoba. Manitoba has a rather high population of native Canadians and there has been quite a lot of political unrest among indigenous people in this country as of late. So I decided to google Manitoba indigenous flags and aha! So according to the excellent website Flags of the World, this is the flag of the Pimi Chickamauk Cree Nation. And then by searching for Pimi Chickamauk protest, I found the original image, which apparently came from a protest staged by members of the nation opposing the construction of dams on their territory in northern Manitoba. So there we go. Flag mystery solved. Next flag comes to me from my friend Alfie from the UK. He says a flag that looks like the Scottish flag flying in Portsmouth, England but yellow. So for this one, I think it's gonna be reverse image search to the rescue. I fashioned a crude version of the flag in Photoshop and then did a Google search by image and aha, here we go. According to this amazon.co.uk page, this is the Mercia St. Albans cross flag. All right, so this is interesting. St. Albans is a city in England and this is indeed their city flag, but it is not a city that is very close to Portsmouth. So unless the owner of this house is a transplanted fan of the St. Albans football club, which knowing England is always possible, I think it is probably the Mercia flag, which looks exactly the same. Mercia is the name of one of the ancient kingdoms making up what is now England. As you can see on this map, the area it encompasses includes modern day Portsmouth. So my guess is that Alfie's friend here is some sort of Mercia nostalgist. I must confess that I don't know enough about British history to know what, if anything, the ancient kingdom of Mercia signifies in the modern British imagination. So if any of my English buddies can help fill me in, let me know. In any case, flag mystery solved. Here's an email from my Icelandic friend, Kari. So an Icelandic police officer was seen with these flags on her uniform and a lot of Icelandic people, especially on the left, went bananas and claimed she was endorsing fascism and Nazism. Everybody had an opinion on the flags, but I don't think anybody really knew what these flags are about. I did not find much about them, so I hope you can clear this up. So I looked up this story and this woman's uniform does indeed seem like it caused quite the scandal in Iceland earlier this year. Apparently it even provoked the country's minister of justice to issue a decree saying no more flags on police uniforms Period. So let's take a closer look at the cop who provoked all this. I can already tell why this first one was trouble. This is clearly an Icelandic version of the infamous thin blue line flag, which is a police pride flag that began as an American thing, but has now been adopted into the flags of countless other countries as well. And since a lot of people don't think cops should be quite so proud of themselves these days, there has been a movement all over the world to get them to stop using this symbol. According to this story from the Reykjavik grapevine, the third one is something known as the Vinland flag, which the Anti-Defamation League officially classifies as a hate symbol. They write that it was created in the 1990s by the heavy metal band Type O Negative. You can see still use it as their symbol to this day. Since their type of goth thrasher music is heavily bound up in Scandinavian culture, it makes sense that the band would make a Scandinavian inspired flag as their logo. But Gothic Viking type stuff also tends to have particular appeal to skinhead types. And the ADL warns that in the early 2000s, white supremacists began to appropriate the flag as a white supremacist symbol, though they also caution us to always pay attention to context. The middle one was harder to identify and wasn't explicitly mentioned in any of the English or Icelandic reporting that I saw. It seems to be just a black version of the Icelandic flag with the letters IS in the corner, which is the official two letter code for Iceland, 
based on the way that the country's name is spelled in their language. These all black patches of country flags are popular all over the world, and they don't really mean anything. They just look cool. I would guess that that's all this one is, with the IS only being there, so you know that this is supposed to be the flag of Iceland, since after you drain the color, it could be the flag of any number of Nordic countries. Okay, so the next one comes from my friend Ireland, who sent me this TikTok video, which features an American woman talking with an unusual flag in her background. I looked her up and she seems to be a fairly prolific TikToker, so I looked through her videos to find some clues. I didn't really find any obvious leads other than she describes herself as being not white, so I assumed that perhaps the flag, which is in the background of a lot of her videos, was part of her family heritage or something. I thought perhaps she was African American or Latino or some combination thereof, but I wasn't able to find any flags associated with those communities that look like this. So then I thought, I know what I will do. I will find the first video she made in which this flag appeared because I figured that the comments would probably be full of people talking about it. And I was right. Everyone in the comments of that video was pointing out her Kanaka Maoli flag. The Kanaka Maoli are the indigenous people of Hawaii an easily overlooked American minority. According to Hawaii Magazine, this flag, which features symbols associated with pre-colonial Hawaii, is considered by some to be a more accurate depiction of the true spirit and culture of the people of Hawaii than the official state flag, which obviously has a quite aggressively colonial design. All right, now let us look at an unusual pair of flags sent to me from my friend Alex from Greece. He says, hello JJ, I found these flags in a Greek beach and I had no idea what they were. Could you please try to find out what they are? So this first one is not much of a mystery to me because I actually own a copy of this flag myself. See, I got it when I was in Chile last year. It is the flag of the indigenous peoples of South America who live around the Andes Mountains. So like Bolivia, Chile, Peru, and Ecuador. So yes, this boat clearly belongs to someone who sailed a fair way. The lion one is a bit weirder. It depicts a lion with wings holding a Bible, which I know is the symbol of the Christian apostle Saint Mark the Evangelist. When you search for Saint Mark flag, however, you usually just get the red flag of the city of Venice home of the famous St. Mark's Basilica. However, with much random clicking, I eventually came across this little book, which has our mystery flag on the cover, as well as a slightly modified one with the Union Jack too. The Ionian Islands, it says, which are seven Greek islands located here which perhaps makes a bit more sense than the indigenous South American flag in terms of flags you would expect to find at a Greek beach. But why is there a Union Jack version? According to the excellent website worldstatesman.org, which has a definitive chronology of all the political regimes of all nations, often illustrated by flags, possession of the Ionian Islands has bounced around quite a bit over the centuries. In the 14th century, they were part of Venice, which I guess explains the flag. Then they were conquered by France, and then they became a joint protectorate of Russia and the Ottoman Empire, then back to France, then Britain, who stuck a Union Jack on their flag and ran the islands until handing them over to Greece in 1864. Fun fact, one of the British commissioners of the islands was future Prime Minister William Gladstone. And lastly, speaking of Union Jacks, my friend Tyler sends me this one. It came from this giant novelty flag he bought that claims to feature over 200 smaller flags. Tyler noted with considerable disappointment that they had to pad the thing with a lot of non-country flags to get over the 200 mark. You can see they have everything from the flag of the Isle of Man to the flag of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations to the decidedly unofficial Antarctica flag. But it's this yellow Union Jack one, along with this one with a few fleur de lises on it that he claimed to not recognize. So let's see if we can help. I've definitely seen this yellow Union Jack before, but usually just in a montage of Union Jack inspired flags that you sometimes see in flag books like this. So you can see that this is apparently the flag of Niue. And what's that? Well, the official Niue tourism website describes it as a Pacific Island paradise like no other, one of the smallest countries and one of the largest raised coral atolls on earth. They weren't kidding about the small part. Uh, apparently the island has less than 1500 residents and it functions as a dependency of New Zealand. Though I see it also has its own 20 member legislature, which seems pretty high. Vancouver has a population of over half a million and we only have 10 people on our city council. Anyway, according to the Niue Flag Act of 1975, the flag's yellow design represents the bright sunshine of Niue and the warm feelings of the Nuean people towards New Zealand. 
and her people. And then the Southern Cross stars here also represent love of New Zealand. Way to suck up, Nui. All right, and then this one here, I did not recognize at all, but it does have fleur de lises on it, which are, of course, a symbol of France. So I figured that this was probably the flag of some French colonial dependency. So I looked for a chart of those. Here is a good one from the fine people at depositphotos.com. It says that this is the flag of Guadeloupe. Let's see how their tourism website describes themselves. Located in the Lesser Antilles between Dominica and Antigua, the stunning French archipelago of Guadeloupe is composed of five islands, blah, 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 blah. The Pearl of the French Caribbean, the perfect island hopping destination, combining the best of French modern infrastructure with genuine Caribbean heritage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how many people? Over 378,000. Okay, that's pretty good. No wonder they can afford to hire that hunky guy from the Nicki Minaj video to be their brand ambassador. But anyway, yes, the flag. Turns out it's a giant scam. Flags of the World says that the islands don't actually have an official flag, other than the French one. The one from Tyler's Thing, or this alternative red version, is apparently just a made-up flag based on the coat of arms of the town of Pointe Pitre, the island's biggest city. It appears to be used for touristic purposes only, they say. And speaking of marketing, it is now time for a word from this video's sponsor. So if you've made it this far, chances are you are a person like me who is really into learning stuff no matter how random or esoteric. And did you know that there is a website out there that is specifically tailored to the insatiable educational appetites of people like you and I? Wondrium formerly The Great Courses Plus. Wondrium is one of the best educational websites out there, offering thousands of hours of recorded video lectures from some of the world's leading experts on a wide range of topics. For instance, let's say you feel I covered some of the stuff in today's video a little bit uh, superficially. Why not check out a few Wondrium courses to fill the gaps? If you want to learn more about the pre-colonial history of Hawaii, for instance, they have a wonderful lecture all about pre-contact Pacific Island societies as part of Professor Craig Benjamin's amazing amazingly thorough The Big History of Civilizations course? Or what if you want to brush up on your Scandinavian death metal thrashing? Well, Wondrium has several distinct courses, all about tips and tricks for the guitar, including a very cool series that analyzes the playing style of some of rock music's greats. If you want to give Wondrium a try, just click on the link in the thing below. You can get a free trial, take a look at what they have to offer, and keep the learning going. Anyway, if you've got a flag mystery that needs solving, send it my way. Unfortunately, I get so many of these emails these days that I basically just have to pick them at random, but it's still less work than doing it yourself. See you all next week.